<laughs> it was one right after another. I couldn't get away from it. I know. Well, and then normally, you know, real life, I don't answer phone numbers, so I don't know. You know, kind of think it's usually, I'll, I'll give you a message. You can't do that when it's this many, it's like, oh. Uh, Is that for me? No. Right, front of And then there's books right here about it also. Thank you. That's going to be up here for people to come and look at for the next four or five weeks. And then we'll have an open meeting about the bridge. Okay, in about a month? Yeah. Or a month and a half ish. I just kind of went ahead and made some highlighted things that I thought you might ask me. And then if you have more questions, obviously I'll try to do whatever I, you know what I mean? Um, but just kind of a brief few little things here and there. Um, so Friday night we ended up, we had uh, 70 to 75 firefighters that showed up Friday night. Uh, with as well as 10 rescue squad members, four ambulance crews, two sheriff's departments, Edina PD, and Highway Patrol. Uh, once we could get into town, we set up instant command at the firehouse and be, uh, began clearing houses and answering 911 calls. So immediately went into the instant command. Ronnie was there. I think he can vouch for the amount of <laughs> people. And, and actually, as far as that goes, I thought it went as well as it could possibly go. Everybody kind of fell in line and did their job and listened. So 
I thought that went well. Um, the Red Cross initial report, which was before the mark, was that they had 19 houses destroyed, 18 houses with major damage, 11 with minor damage. Uh, the, the initial numbers were six households with no insurance, two that were destroyed, three with major damage, one minor, with 10 unknowns still before the mark. So um, I'm still waiting to get the exact final numbers back from them, but I know that from the updated list that she gave me after that, we were at more like 12 to 16 houses with no insurance. I know that from talking to some people at the mark, that we didn't reach the threshold, whatever threshold for whatever they were talking about money-wise, we didn't have enough uninsured people to meet whatever that threshold was. Which, if we didn't meet it, then I didn't really want to know about it because can't get it, then why, I don't need that more information that we can't get. But I'm still waiting back to get, in which starting Monday, I'll start getting with these people. I figured they're going to need a few days to go through. Um, the Barry Disaster Fund was set up pretty well immediately with the Minister Alliance. Uh, so far, as of this morning, they've had 9,000, I think it, I have approximately 9,000. He sent me, it was like $9,127 so far to that one fund. Um, the only money they've had, they've doled out of that fund yet, is they paid $1,700 to the motel for the displaced people that have been staying there, which pays them up until Saturday. They should have, hopefully, they're, I'll check back with them, but I've been giving them a little bit of space and time to let the people that were over there do their gig. Maybe they'll find them a hot place to go. I know, I know of options that they've had, but it's up to them to make them options, but I don't know how we go about urging them, you know what I mean? But we're working on it. They're still, they're taken care of for now. And if they have to stay longer, we'll still be able to pay for them. I mean, it's not that but um the mark was held wednesday we ended up having about 20 to 25 groups or organizations there that day uh, we assisted 50 households or 95 individuals uh, the salvation army they gave me numbers right away they gave out 12 to 14 thousand in gift cards that day uh, basically the way they explained to me everybody walked away with something Unless they, there was several that said, um, I don't need it, give it to somebody else. Which is pretty amazing that people would do that. But the, there was people that said, I have a job, I have means, just give it to somebody that don't. So uh, with that being said, uh, between SEMA and I, I thought our mark was a huge success. Uh, the se it was only the second one in the last nine to ten years in our region that's ever been set up. So. I thought it went well. We had a good turnout of people, a good turnout of uh, victims or households, you know. So, all in all, I thought that went in well. Um, Jeff Alton, so you told me 30 to 50 originally, you thought on the preliminary. Well, I kind of told him that, but then told him immediately not to because Les said, hey, that might be higher than that. Uh, so, he went ahead and put in 150K. He said it's a preliminary, it's not a nothing to stick to, but they were trying to get that initial stuff going. So he went ahead and bumped it up to 150K for us and said that way we still have room to go either way if we have to. So that was turned in so that he could turn it in with the Clark and Scotland, because Scotland ended up turning in too. And originally it was just a Darren Clark that had turned in, but Scotland ended up turning in too. So all you know, of us have turned in our preliminaries. Um, Convoy of Hope, they delivered eight pallets of totes on Tuesday. Um, as of Thursday, they were almost gone when I was there yesterday. They were down to like a quarter pallet. So I emailed, emailed them, which they had already been in contact with me, um, to see if we could get some more. So they're working on that and waiting to hear back on getting them some more totes, but I'm working on getting them more totes because they're using them. Uh, Convoy of Hope sent me a partner agreement that they need the county to sign with them to says that they work. And then they also request a W-9 filled out by the county. So I got that for you. And then when they get that filled out, I can scan it and send it back to them. Um, I talked to Cindy, Senator Cindy O'Loughlin in her office several times. 
Um, she wants to help where she can. Uh, I talked to Nick yesterday from her office. I think he said he was out of Columbia, but he was, uh, we talked, one of his big things that we talked about was the post office, which then when I got here this morning, I think um, our representative's office is on that too. Sam Graves. Sam Graves, yeah. And on that. also uh, Josh Holly's office is working on that as well. So we have several government entities working hard to try to get their post office back to them and to have a post office. Um, she also, her office and everything wants, if there's something else that they can help with, to let her know from your as in to my end. So it's there. I have some numbers if you guys don't or need something from individuals, let me know. I'll give them to you. Uh, a semi load, yes, I think it was yesterday, might have been Wednesday, showed up. Semi load of water, non perishable foods, and cleaning buckets with supplies in them were delivered to Jerry Reeves over here. Uh, He's going to set up a distribution. Kind of, I think we're looking more towards doing something like they do for the commodities, where they can just have it. This is for burying people only on a separate day. They can come through and that way they can just. Uh, we're looking at putting it out a little bit instead of doing it right away because a lot of the food and stuff, people don't have nowhere to go with it yet or anything anyway. So we figure we'll, we got it. If people need stuff, they know or should know to get a hold of him and he can get it to him directly. But as far as the mass big one, we figured we'd wait till they had a little more of a cleanup, maybe some more of where they're at. Um, two containers were purchased to, by the Bayern, Bayern Volunteer Fire Department and delivered on Tuesday. Um, as of Thursday, yesterday when I was there, they're full. They're are real close to being full. Um, we've had an anonymous donor come up and give $4,200 and they bought two more. So two more are being delivered on Monday. Um, up there, they've already been paid for. Um, so they'll have four total. And the anonymous donor was right along with what everybody else was saying. So the four containers that are there can be used as long as they want. The fire, the fire department says it don't matter if it's two years that people need to store their stuff there to get till they get their home going. It's gonna stay there. And then when they are completely empty, they're gonna turn them into a fire training center for the whole county. So it'll be reused to better the community anyway. So that's good. Um, volunteers over there have been plentiful and hardworking. Um, with Raymond Jr., I talked to him and he had, uh, he's, his best estimates obviously was uh, 100 on Saturday. He had 65 on Monday, 40 on Tuesday, and then Wednesday with the rain and stuff and this going on, they didn't have, he didn't have any, he said. I'm sure there was people doing stuff, but, and then he had another 60 yesterday. And as far as I know, they're planning on staying till they needed to, you know, as long as needed. Um, several benefits uh, sales are being planned. I don't have nothing to do with them. I don't want to have nothing to do with them. I just, so you know, I don't, you know, um, starting on Monday with the Barry Relief Fund, the Minister Alliance don't want to be in charge of that. They, they don't, it shouldn't be them anyway. If you go through SEMA, we should be setting up a VOAD or a long-term relief committee. Um, they suggest we use people from Red Cross. And it'd be one person from several organizations along with some local folks from somewhere that would make a board and then they have to get their 501c. I mean, they need to be legit, legit. And then the Mineral Minister Alliance one that says they'll give them that money immediately, you know, and turn it, whatever's in that fund to them. And then that committee would be the committee that would then decide how that money is dispersed. Um, yeah. I'm gonna start working on it on Monday and get a hold of several people and try to see what we should do. Um, I don't want to be on that board. I, I don't want no part of that. Neither does the fire department at Bear. They don't want, and it's going to be a kind of a hard situation because, so just for instance, the mayor of Bearing, well, if we use city council, they've got their stuff destroyed too. So either they could feel like they don't want to get something because they're in that position or people will look at them like they're taking advantage of. 
So I think that it doesn't need to be them, you know, necessarily, uh, but yet I do think it needs to be somebody from our community and that knows who people are and the situations so that the actual, our voices are being heard. I don't think it should just be people that aren't from here that are all these organizations that are great and they know what they're doing, but I think some of us, we, so I don't know where that'll go, but we're working on it and I want to get them to get it going as fast as they can so that they can try to help these people and distribute this that's getting in. It'd be nice to set it up like that so if something ever does happen again, the same organization be used. So if, if there was a way to get someone from each town, yeah. each, you know, yeah. division of the county, yeah. county yeah. that yeah. way the whole county as a whole could be part of that group. Yeah. And then that would help divide it up. That uh, SEMA's going to be a big help on that. They're, they're good and they know how to set these up and they know who to point us, them people in the right directions to get what they need done immediately as well. And that's why I also thought that Salvation Army or Red Cross, them groups that they have on there, them people know they do this for a living and they're, you know what I mean? So, so they they would know how to go about doing it correctly, I think, you know, so we're working on that. Um, truthfully, all these other benefits and stuff, everybody's saying, I don't know how they're gonna do it. In a perfect world, in my mind, all those organizations would turn their money into the disaster fund, and then that would be distributed by the committee. I know that's not how it's going to be because I know several of them are talking they're going to give out their own gift cards, and that's why I say I don't want no no part because somebody's going to get their feelings hurt at some point, and I just hope that the people that are doing these benefits realize how they need to be transparent and how things could. I can speak Go, to that. You know what I mean? I can speak to that because a lot of people have reached out to me wanting information, wanting to set things up. Uh, I've, the Ministerial Alliance has come to me. The Chamber of Commerce has come to me. They want to be completely transparent. And so they will be releasing totals of money raised as it's asked for. And we will be able to publish that. So... People who are donating can see how much is being collected and where exactly it's at and then what is, what is happening with it as we progress into the future. Yes, I don't know if there's anything else you want to ask me or anything. I do have, um, I guess I have a question too. <clears throat> I'm getting called from people inside these other benefits that want lists of people. I don't feel comfortable giving out anybody's information on anything. I want to make sure that you guys kind of have my back or kind of agree work that I'm, you know, because I, I feel like I'm trying to represent the county, but I don't want to give out people's information. I don't think that's right. You know what I mean? That's why I think the, res the going to that fund is the way to go because that fund has people that have that information and that that information can be kept confidential because Personally, I don't believe it's anybody's business who had insurance and who didn't have insurance. Or it's at least not my business to tell somebody who did or who didn't or what their, how much they were affected and how much they weren't affected by this. Exactly. I don't, I don't want to be, in, you know what I mean? I don't, yeah. I don't think that's, I wouldn't want my information just given out to nobody. I know the organizations that took their information don't just give it out to everybody. I don't want to be in that room <laughs> either, you know what so I mean? So if anybody's wanting to help someone, we have those people in those places that they can go to get into touch and those places can help distribute and hand out and stuff. Yeah. So I don't feel like we're in the spot to be telling someone what individuals to go to. Okay. So I they need to go to as a whole, go to those contacts for those things, mm -hmm. depending on what they're wanting to do, mm -hmm. who they need to get a hold of, and that's who they need to reach out to. And then those people can help them get in touch where they need to be. So we're in agreement yeah. and that's okay. Um, the other, I have uh, the information and paperwork on um, Missouri Disaster Assistant Grants stuff from SEMA. Um, from what I've read and what I'm gathering, we don't necessarily qualify for a lot of the stuff that they have, or that's in that particular one. Uh, but what I also understand is if 
the right people in the right places say and do the right things and that it could possibly come through. I don't know. I have stuff. I'm looking at it. I'm working with whoever I can trying to get whatever we can. Um, I might have to have some questions answered here or there. So I'll give it to you guys when I that to get stuff that I'm looking towards Monday because I'm figuring that I'm really trying to myself transition into long term relief stage now, not as much, you know, the immediate let's the people are waiting on insurance and you know they got their own things. I'm trying to just set up for the future. Um, they want to build back better than what they were. So I mean I'm trying to help everywhere I can and try to be wherever I can, but I also have a job and I have to kind of start getting somewhat back to, you know, normalcy a little bit for myself. You know, I'll still be there to do whatever needs to be done and work with whoever and I can still be gone if I need to, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to convert myself into the long term. And you said the one we didn't meet the qualifications for was SEMA or FEMA? From what I understand, the FEMA, I think, the and I, I not, don't quote me 100%, but from what I understand, the FEMA, I think our county as a whole, they're going to end up, we, we were close to reaching that with the other counties to get county assistance. Individual aid, from what I've understand, we did not, or not probably not going to reach the, that criteria. That would be something, yeah, but with SEMA, they have, they have some grants, so that, you know, it's kind of a, so they have stuff, they have stuff, but I don't, from what they've told me, we don't look like we're going to meet that criteria for individual FEMA assistance. Again, Jeff City would make that decision and be more to make them kind of things, you know, on that bigger level. Um, I'm just, I know that we have, like, a, the, there's a disaster mitigation plan committee that does that every five years and makes one for our whole region, our little area. Uh, he's out of Scotland County, that's part of somewhere, but um, things that people start asking, things like weather sirens and storm shelters, those are in, already in our mitigation. So when they have the funds that go out for them once a year, we look, now that it's over, it kind of helps us that those are already in that plan. He knows about that we want all that stuff. So when those come open again, we're already kind of in line to be filling out for that stuff down the line. So it's a terrible thing, but any monies that we can get from anywhere, we're going to try to get whether I can do it from my vantage point or the fire department at their end, they're the same boat, they're looking at anything and then the city needs to be on that same page as well as the county. You know what I mean? Everybody kind of just keeping your eyes and ears open. And I, I know if, the, that, if nothing else, that mark, I met a lot of people, you know, that were a lot of different things that I wouldn't have known and now they know me as well. And so they know what our situation is here in our county. And so they all were like, any opportunities, we're gonna automatically, you know, as soon as it comes out, we'll let you guys know. So then any of those, I'm gonna take, try to fill out the red, every single thing that we can try to get, because why not? You, was Jeff the one that told you, who's telling you we didn't meet? Uh, the it was Jeff and Jody were saying they didn't think in the, that we were going to reach the individual level. Um, I'm sure a lot of that still has to do with all the final numbers that all them things are putting together and that SEMA put together because the EOA had. And that's how they're counting individually. There's still the other one. That yeah, the county one, one I, that it sounded like yeah. that they were like 85% yeah. that that was going to happen for the county, you know, for you guys to get rid of that flooding damage yeah. and that sort of thing that goes with that, that I, it sounded like, but it's going to be, go through. Because they were going to, it's all numbers. Is what, what I'm learning, it's all about my numbers, how much, how many, and that sort of thing. So, but we have, the population isn't that high, so our numbers, even with the big scale, we still just, we don't, you know, But again, they kept saying that 
they worked for Jeff City. So, you know, Jeff City ends up having the final say on all this, a lot of this stuff, especially through CMAC. If they say do something, they do it. So, we'll see where that goes and how, you know, I know we do have some friends that are looking out or trying to look out for us there. Sounds like, you know. Senior Lawson's office has been yeah. working nonstop um, and is hopefully making waves in things like the post office issue and uh, senior housing and put <clears throat> the full power of her office behind very yeah. senior housing and trying to get those people situated and uh, investigating ways to work, you know, get whatever assistance to them as possible. Yeah. Also, um, just on the informational standpoint, while we're talking about the post office, I'm in the process of building a list. I've reached out to our U.S. Um, legislators, Senator Hawley's office, Senator Schmidt's office, and Congressman Graves' office. They have been very responsive. They're in the process, a, few, a couple of them, of getting us a comprehensive list of where people can uh, call, write, email um, uh, on the post office issue. That's one of the fronts that I'm working on right now from the informational component. And I'm aiming to have all of that in, you know, ready, you know, not online and in the paper uh, in our next edition. So, and I will juice that out to uh, all of the news, <coughs> local news entities that have been on the ground as well. and let 
others is going to have to pick this up and take it home too. Right. So uh, just keep up the good work and, and let's all keep working together. Let's all keep this because there's a lot of progress. Yeah, it's amazing the cleanups that they've done so far. Is, it's amazing how fast them guys worked and how many. That Saturday, it was unbelievable the amount of people, the amount of skid loaders and equipment that came from everywhere and everywhere. I don't think you can get another vehicle in there. Right yeah, it was, that was, the, was one of the biggest there. things I heard since then was that was the complaint. Was It's, it's a, hard to complain, but it was almost so <laughs> many people that they, it's amazing nobody got hurt. I mean, it really is, but uh, it, it's just, the Barron community in general has been great to work with. I mean, it, from their fire department is spectacular, and they deserve a lot of credit. And still, and their families and Weaver Lane Disaster Area, however, whatever their name is, you know, I messed up. But man, everybody's been good. I don't think I've had one. I, I, I've had a few, but I haven't had too many issues with anything, you know, or or even arguments or anything, you know. And so it's it's been pretty good on that end. And part of that, let that roll off. That's emotion. Yeah. People, people stressed out, messed up. You understand? I mean, it just happens. Yeah. And so you got. I think you've done good at letting that roll off. It seems like you have. We've tried to. <laughs> yeah. You know. And uh, you know, it's one of those things where if you're not prepared, you're prepared to fail. Yeah. And while we were over there cleaning up and everything, there was a lady that had an incident that needed to be kind of checked out. He had his first responder bag in his truck. He went over, got her checked out, made sure she was okay, got her blood pressure and stuff. She sat with her for a while and got her calmed down and stuff. So, I mean, as he's over there, I mean, he's still, you know, he's got everybody's best interest in his eyes to make sure everybody's being safe and take care of. So, it, uh, it really shows, so. That list that you have, I'd like if you could copy that or email that to me. Yeah, I can email it to you. Notes you read off to us. Okay. Yep. And then, Yep, I can do that. I think that's, yeah. I think that's all for the day. Okay. And then you, can you guys you? just talk about where you're at with the Barron, you know, disaster response? What is the county doing on your end to to support Barron? We're really working to get the, we had more road damage than we first thought. So our road crews have been busy trying to get roads where they were passable. And then, as far as what's going on in Barry, it, it, it seems like one of the things I've been thinking about, government can really mess things up sometimes. And what's going on over there is being handled. And so we've been talking to you, we've been talking to all of them, we've been talking, how do we do, what do we do? Right now, we're, I'm trying to get long-term, I'm looking for money, I'm looking for housing money, I'm looking for money for the businesses that want to rebuild. How do we get them financing where they can stay there? You can't lose, you can't lose them families out of there and you can't lose those businesses out of there. Right. And so as, as far as the county, we're, as soon as they get the roads and get some of that, we're over there trying to help repair the roads in Barry. I think it's too early right now with everything that's going on over there. And so uh, we're prepared to start helping with that when we can. And has the county done anything as far as any equipment, any manpower, any funds from the county coffers over to the Bering Tornado response? We've been over there every day. No, we haven't transferred money out. Um, we've been trying to figure out how to do that, the way the government's set up for us to start writing checks to the city of Bering or the Bering Fire Department. Is there a, okay. So trying to support it trying to help push it along, and then we're here for a long haul. As far as transferring money, like I said, we've looked at it. We've called the attorney. There's, our hands are tied on a lot of stuff, but we can and cannot do. When it comes time to rock the roads and some of that, that's stuff we can do. And so, uh, I don't know exactly you know, what you're looking for. The only thing that's really like at the top of my mind is we had a situation with shipping containers where we needed shipping containers immediately. We needed to get these people's personal belongings secured 
it was a financial challenge is what it was my understanding. The county was asked to step in and purchase these shipping containers and that did not happen and those containers were ended up being funded by other well, sources. Just so you know, on the shipping containers, I drove to Barry. Kim and I were gonna put the money in the shipping containers. I drove over there, offered to pay for those containers up front, use them as long as you want to, whatever you want with them. Kim and I were gonna pay that out of our pocket. Because we had some red flags of what we could and couldn't do with the county money. When I got there, I explained to the fire department how this was gonna work. The fire department decided to purchase them. It was my understanding by the time we were having this conversation that KJ had already purchased the containers. It was all dead in the water. But we did we did look at that. We did try to find ways to do that. And so what we offered to do was just buy the containers and let them use them. Because I, I could do that. That was my money. I could do what I wanted to do. With the county money, there's stuff we can and cannot do. And so that was one of the things the attorney told us that we could not do. And that's one of those things, like, at the meeting the other day, there at Barron, uh, getting that permission to uh, release liability for the county, from the county for the city and stuff. That's what's going to free us up to be able to go in there with our with our guys and our equipment to fix the streets, to lay the gravel and stuff. Um, we have had that release of liability before we can do anything. Um, as far as the helping the fire department and stuff like that, as far as um, that goes with, with county money, we, we can only do intergovernmental. So we can help the city, but we can't help a volunteer group. Um, so if the, if the city is doing something that they need help with, as far as this disaster goes, that's where we're able to kind of step in and help them. If, they, if the city comes to us with, with something, then we can try to figure out a way to better help them. But we can't help a volunteer group. Okay, so I just want to just put this in your orbit. Uh, the city of Dinah had every available piece of equipment and manpower in bearing from Saturday morning on. And so if you could just keep in your, on the list in the back of your mind, they've been in bearing since, and they're gonna have a budgetary issue come the end of this year, I'm sure. So if, you know, if you're intergovernmental and you can dedicate funding to help support things like the city of Bering and the city of Edina, um, please keep that in mind. Is that something, you know, that might be something you can dedicate county funds to uh, in the future. You know, and the reason I'm asking you guys is because people are asking me, you know, so. Um, people wanna know, you know, what's been done in Bering on the county end of it. We're seeing, you know, the Knox County Arlen School District responded with equipment and manpower. The Knox County Nursing Home responded with equipment and manpower. The, Edina, the city of Edina responded with equipment and manpower. But Knox County did not respond with any of that. And people well, are wondering. And that's where, if you go back to early in our conversation today, when we talked about Saturday, when we talked about all those people there, you couldn't fit anything else in that town. There was people turned out. So if we sent more over there, it would have just been more of a cluster. We're not saying we're not doing anything, because we are going to go over there and help. But the thing is, is they have that covered, that end of the cleanup and everything. So what we're looking at is after that cleanup and stuff's done, we're going to go in there with our equipment, our manpower. We're going to buy the rock. We're going to we're going to go back in there and we're going to fix those roads up so they still have roads. You can see they're all pumping. They're getting bad. Or yeah. it's it's going to be a lot of work to maintain that. And that's where once those people pull out, that's when we're going to go in and start trying to help clean up the roads and get things you know usable again. What about so, the highway? You know, the highway through town, which is the main drag, <clears throat> is it something you guys are going to be able to work on the highway? Can you guys, you know, help work with MoDOT to maybe um, speed that up a bit? To, you know what I mean? Once it's time to start doing, working on roads and bearing, is that something that yeah, you guys... And the blacktop will have to be through MoDOT. Uh, but that's where, you know, as the county commissioners, we can... We can help try to, you know, put leverage on them to get their speed up, but at the same time, it's going to have to go through those MoDOT steps uh, to be done. Mm -hmm. Let's go through MoDOT. 
but we don't have an asphalt plant. I'd like to. And all the work been done so far has really, really been appreciated so, yeah. by everybody in the community and the county. And, and going back to, you know, the county helping Barron as a whole, you know, right now, why they have that help, that gives us time to get our roads, you know, fixed. You know, we had, we had tubes that were washed out. We had 10 foot section of road that was completely missing in one part. Another one where the road was washed out all the way around the tube, just different things like that. So our guys are out, you know, trying to get all these roads in the county that are passable and stuff while they're doing this cleanup, and then once they're done with that, we should be about done with our cleanup on our roads to allow us to move right in to help fix their roads. So it really gives us the kind of time to fix the county issues that we have with all the rain, with all the flooding, the different washouts and stuff, and then we'll be able to move in there to help. So we are going to help. It's just not, you know, like we're just, you know, sitting back watching everybody else do stuff. So. Looking for the best way to yes. take your resources. Yes. I mean, we could throw we could throw manpower and guys over there and equipment, but right now you're at that point where there's some equipment just sitting there because there's too much equipment there right now. So, um, have you been in the last? Were you there yesterday? Yes. I mean, it's night and day different. You know, there's a lot a lot of those damaged buildings. All that's left is a slab. You know, there's still a lot up that need to come down, but I mean, I'm it's just amazing blown away how fast they, they go by they, they the amount of work. And it's interesting because I was uh, on the phone interviewing with the upper echelon of Ameren and Ameren, Missouri. We had a conference call yesterday where um, the regional director for here got on with me and just really laid it down. And, uh, what happened here was significant from their end of it. And that really tells me because this is their business, storm response. And they had people on the ground one hour after the tornado assessing the damage. And then when they rolled in with that 75 of everything, you know, uh, and the takeaway that the kind of the top of their triangle that was on the ground here was how amazing it is the response of Bering, Missouri, you know, and specifically made it a point to really nail down. Uh, this is a little town, and for the amount of support that showed up and how impressed he and his team was with what they saw in Bering and what a good experience it was for all of their responders. Um, because of that, um, I just can't drill down uh, enough and um, and I was very appreciative to hear the upper echelon of the Aaron people sending the message, you know, bearing Missouri, we're with you. So, um, and their response showed, yeah. absolutely, just like everyone else. So, I'm, I'm very proud. Yeah, it was always, Australian. yeah. It's always like when we first got there in Friday night, it was, it felt like it was an eternity to get to do anything, you know, everybody, all the departments, you know, they all have chainsaws. People were showing up left and right with chainsaws, wanting to clear roads. And I can't send nobody out to cut a tree up in a road when I don't have confirmation that the power is not on, when there's power lines between every tree. So it was very challenging to stand there and wait and not be able to put people to work that wanted to do stuff you know, to, to try to think safely and, you know, cause it, and I was, we were pretty certain that there wasn't a lot of power going through at that time cause there was so much damage that I was pretty sure it was, you know, but without confirmation and that, that was hard, but it felt like it took them a long time, but I really don't think it was like she said, within an hour, probably they were there or somebody, but it felt like an eternity when it was sitting at the time, you know, which people always have told me that on, you know, waiting ambulance calls and stuff. And they took you so long and no, I can show you we were there in eight minutes or something. Well, it felt like a lot longer. And I think that that happened. That was part of the deal there that night. But all in all, it went well. I appreciate you guys helping out where you have been, helping out and being around. I do appreciate that.
Do you guys have any questions for us? Okay, we've got a lot to do, so I'm going to shut this down and go back to work. Do you want to add anything while we're live to the people who are watching? Or Okay. Okay, well, call us if you need us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I hear these. I don't know who has to do what. I don't know if that's nothing. Yeah. Right. There's only this. I was like, well, who yeah. needs that? What is this? Uh, I'm not going to let me know. What are we talking about? <laughs> you know, but Stephanie will need to fill this out. And then we'll need to look through this and we'll make a motion. So, so. Okay. And then like just that. like I said, let me know where you drop it off and drop it down here. Try yeah. Billy, really, you're getting a lot of accolades on the internet right now. You're You're a hero. Can you, before I let you go, can you just tell everybody how much you make to be the Knox County Emergency Management Director? <laughs> uh, originally it was $100 a month. I recently they seen fit to give me a raise to $250 a month. Okay, thank you.